The Smell of Rain Here are the excerpts from Diana Blessing's message on August 21, 2000. A cold March wind danced around the dead of night in Dallas as the doctor walked into the small hospital room of Diana Blessing. She was still groggy from the surgery. Her husband, David, held her hand as they braced themselves for the latest news. That afternoon of March 10, 1991, complications forced Diana, only 24 weeks pregnant, to undergo an emergency cesarean section to deliver the couple's new daughter, Dana Lou Blessing. At 12 inches long and weighing only 1 pound 9 ounces, they already knew she was perilously premature. Still, the doctor's soft words dropped like bombs. I don't think she's going to make it, he said, as kindly as he could. There's only a 10% chance she will live through the night, and even then, if by some slim chance she does make it, her future could be a very cruel one. Numb with disbelief, David and Diana listened as the doctor described the devastating problems Dana would likely face if she survived. She would never walk, she would never talk, she would probably be blind, and she would certainly be prone to other catastrophic conditions from cerebral palsy to complete mental retardation, and on and on. No, no, was all Diana could say. She and David, with their five-year-old son Dustin, had long dreamed of the day they would have a daughter to become a family of four. Now, within a matter of hours, that dream was slipping away. But as those first days passed, a new agony set in for David and Diana. Because Dana's underdeveloped nervous system was essentially raw, the lightest kiss or caress only intensified her discomfort, so, they couldn't even cradle their tiny baby girl against their chests to offer the strength of their love. All they could do, as day beneath the ultraviolet light and tangle of tubes and wires, was to pray that God would stay close to their precious little girl. There was never a moment when Dana suddenly grew stronger. But as the weeks went by, she did slowly gain an ounce of weight here and an ounce of strength there. At last, when Dana turned two months old her, her parents were able to hold her in their arms for the very first time. And two months later, though doctors continued to gently but grimly warn that her chances of surviving, much less living any kind of normal life, were next to zero. Dana went home from the hospital, just as her mother had predicted. Five years dicted. Five years later, when Dana was a petite but feisty young girl with glittering grey eyes and an unquenchable zest for life, she showed no signs whatsoever of any mental retardation or physical impairment. Simply, she was everything a little girl can be and more. But that happy ending is far from me. One blistering afternoon in the summer of 1996 near her home in Irving, Texas. Dana was sitting in her mother's lap in the bleachers of a local ballpark where her brother Dustin's team was practicing. As always, Dana was chattering away non-stop with her mother and several other adults sitting nearby, when she suddenly fell silent. Hugging her arms across her chest, little Dana asked. Do you smell that? Smelling the air and detecting the approach of a thunderstorm, Diana replied, Yes, it smells like rain. Dana closed her eyes and again asked, Do you smell that? Once again, her mother replied, Yes, I think we're about to get wet. It smells like rain. Still caught in the moment, Dana shook her head, patted her thin shoulder with her small hands and loudly announced, No, it smells like him. It smells like God when you lay your head on his chest. Tears blurred Diana's eyes as Dana happily hopped down to play with the other children. When it was clear that their daughter's problems were greater than they could handle Diana and David turned to God in prayer. You see Diana and David were the good soil. Someone had led both to church and God's word. Wasn't it wonderful that Diana, didn't question Dana's statement, smells like God when you lay your head on his chest. Diana had immediately accepted God's message of comfort as did Dana. Dana was God's seed, planted into an already faithful family, and that statement would further strengthen it, along with other family, friends, and church community.